Woman of the Hour, the brand new Netflix film that just hit the service. This is the directorial debut for Anna Kendrick, who's originally signed on just to be the lead. But after the director pulled out, Kendrick became the director in her directorial debut. She also stars as the character of Cheryl, a struggling working actress in Los Angeles. And after struggling to make it on any TV show or movie, she lands being the girl in the late 70s, The Dating Game, which is hosted by Ed, played by Tony Hale. But what she does not realize at first that one of the three men who are trying to get on a date with her is a one of the most famous serial killers of all time in Rodney played by Daniel Zavato. At the same time we follow Cher, we also follow Rodney in his multiple killings and a person who possibly could get out of his reach. Nicola Robinson is also movie as Laura, someone who's in the crowd of the dating game and recognizes this vicious killer. The film is an hour and 35 minutes and is rated R. Welcome back to a brand new review here at Max Talks Movies. My name is Max Dinenberg. We're talking woman of the hour. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. I do movie and TV show reviews, out of theater reactions, movie franchise rankings, and every Tuesday, a box office show. So if you like any one of those things, please join me and subscribe and ring that bell to notify when my videos drop. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on the new on the new uh, Woman of the Hour film? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Should this movie be through in awards season this year? Let me know in the comment section down below. I respond to every single comment. And also, please put the thumbs up button. Click that thumbs up and really help support the channel on YouTube. The more you guys like my videos, the more it will be uh, recommended to more people. So please hit that thumbs up button. So I actually enjoyed the trailer for the movie, but I'm not. I'm very like hit or miss with Anna Kendrick in her career. So. I was definitely interested, but about this topic um, and for, for a movie, but let's get into my thoughts on Woman of the Hour. And for me, this is the biggest mixed bag movie of the entire year because this movie at times has sheer brilliance. Now, the brilliance of this movie is the performance of Daniel Zavato, who's playing this serial killer. And um, he does some horrible things in the movie, but what makes this film pop is his performance because just like the women who get sucked into his uh, realm, he is a very charming individual. Um, and the fact that he can both play the most vicious serial killer you see, but also a charming guy who could understand women being comfortable letting their guard down. And I think when the movie focuses on that, the movie is good. But the problem is the movie is kind of feels like two different movies are going on because you're following Cheryl, who's like an upbeat, quirky, comedic, uh, struggling actress. And they're going back and forth between that and a serial killer doing serial killer things throughout the movie. And I found the movie at times to really struggle tonally. Because you'll go through an upbeat scene of Cheryl getting her makeup done in the chair and then cutting to him on a mountain killing someone. I just feel like from a tonal perspective, it is a bit just jarring going back from an upbeat dating game to vicious serial killer who also you know rapes people. It just it's very two polar opposite tones. And I think the movie does struggle balancing that in the runtime. Um, but the performances across the board are really strong. As I said, Daniel Zavato is brilliant in this movie. And now after this performance, I'm very excited to see uh, where his future lies. Anna Kendrick is really good in this movie, both in the acting and the directing. From an acting perspective, she's very good. She's doing very Anna Kendrick things. But I would say the last 30 minutes, she absolutely delivers. And she feels like an authentic, real person who she's playing um, cause this movie is based off true events. I, f I forgot to say that in the beginning. Um, she is very, has a very vulnerable performance in the back half of the movie. And it is for me, one of her strongest performances, just that last 30 minutes of her career. Um, directing wise, she directs with a lot of confidence in this movie. Someone who, again, wasn't originally supposed to be the behind the camera for this movie. And then has to get thrust into being her directorial debut, the movie is very well made. Um, the sets are gorgeous and the directing choices are really clever in this movie because the whole point of this film is to put you in the shoes of a woman 
in this situation, both a woman in the late 70s, the woman trying to make it in Hollywood, a woman trying to survive a dating game and dating life, and then a woman just trying to survive a predator or a, a serial killer. And they do a really good job of that from the woman's perspective. But the problem here is there is literally not a single good male character in the entire movie. I think there does, with messages like this, I think it's a good idea to show that both men, obviously a lot of men are like these people in this movie, but there are also a lot of men who aren't like that. And I do wish there's even just one male character because Tony Hale's character is not a good person. Obviously, you have the serial killer, even her acting coach and even the guys on the show are either serial killers or misogynistic or sexist. There's not this one true, like even decent dude in the entire film. And I think that doesn't because they're going for this message, you need to kind of balance that with at least one or two good male characters who have people's back. But the movie makes it like every woman, every woman goes through this and every woman, um, all the guys are bad. I think there could have if, if they want to get that message across, they could have done a better job. So this is a frustrating one because there are points and also sorry, from a big negative perspective, the Laura C plot was actually really interesting. And I feel like they completely just kind of threw that plot line away towards the third act. And she, that was one of the more compelling parts of the movie. And there were times, and once the movie ended, I said that pr they probably could have just written her character completely out of the movie. Um, but again, this movie is only 94 minutes anyway. So um, that's my thoughts. It's a frustrating one. There is sure brilliance in this movie because it's extremely well-directed. The two leads are fantastic in the movie. And you definitely feel that intensity, feeling like a woman in this type of situation. But it has a hard time balancing tone and the message that it is trying to get across. So I'm going to give Woman of the Hour a 2.5 out of 5. I am going to go 51% for the new Netflix one. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.